Hello, dear friends. This is Cardiac Radio at 11 p.m. Nourishing our souls together. As you know, Cardiac Radio is here to share another chapter tonight of the book Jesus in the Home. In this book, we find stories of the encounters between the disciples and Jesus the Master. And it's a joy for us because we all feel the need to feel together, to feel that we belong. It's human, but it's, I would say, it's more than human because when we study across the whole phylogenesis, we find the same bonding needs in animals as well. Plants have their own features in that regard as well. And when we study the mineral kingdom, we already see it there, right? As Leon Denis says in his book, After Death, when he talks about love, and it's this very book, After Death by Leon Denis, when he talks about love, he talks about the fact that it is in the force of attraction of the atoms that we find the this loving nature and capacity in all of us. So we are created that way, right? Why is it so important for us to know our true essence? As the Spirit said to Kardec in the Spirit's book, when we know of ourselves, we advance more steadily, make less mistakes. Often we make mistakes because we don't know. So it's important to know. Many people think, oh, I just go by my feelings. Well, but feelings can be deceiving because they are passing. Like as we say, emotions, it's an external movement, externalized movement of the soul. Not necessarily, not necessarily, we need to go with that flow. Sometimes that flow needs to be changed. Need to be, we need to shift gears. We need to completely move to another direction and discernment reasoning is the way to go through the tool of discernment we can reorganize ourselves right that's why umberto de campos in the book among brothers of other lands telling us about a beautiful paraphrasing of the parable of the talents he ends up by saying that spiritism is the light of discernment, and it is. Discernment is everything, without which we rarely will know what to do properly. So, boosting our discernment as we read, study together, we feel stronger and more certain about the direction to go. Many people ask sometimes, but how do I know that what we're studying is really true? Sometimes, you know, you have that moment, that gap in your faith. And you feel like there is an abyss between what you think you're seeing and where you are. And you can't see in between. And you feel like it's a leap of faith or else. Just keep marching steadily, because you see, there is no abyss. There is no abyss. It's just an illusion. God loves you, loves me. Look at nature, contemplate nature, and we'll see that God is not joking with us. Some people think that God is playing with us, but that's not true. When we contemplate nature as our dear Ellen Kardec shares with us in the spirit book, first chapter. In contemplating nature, the superior spirit revealed to Kardec, Kardec shared with us. We will find the certainty that life is simply phenomenal. We cannot understand yet the true nature of God, but we can feel it. And it's mesmerizing when you observe a flower 
a little puppy. The trees, the mountains, the sea, the beach, a baby, children, the wind. When we feel the breeze of the wind, when you see snow, when we look at the sun and the rays of light, everything so perfect that we think these are effects of a most phenomenal cause we call it God. It must be amazing. Why did God create us to be co-creators? So if tonight you feel honored about being a co-creator, here we are, friends. Welcome to Kardec Radio as we're going to be studying chapter 21 of this book, Jesus in the Home. And it's chapter tonight. It's about being a co-creator. No, you are not to be a co-creator in poverty. You are not to be a co-creator in mediocrity. You can be a co-creator with the resources that God is granting to you. And there's nothing wrong about it. Today, Jesus is teaching us a lesson on the industrious rich men. So welcome to Kardec Radio. Welcome, friends. I can see Jailton. Welcome, Jailton. Welcome, Rihanna, Alicia Ramos. Welcome, Raquel Bakeshi. How are you? Welcome, Lisa Teles. Happy Thursday. Sure, Alicia. Livia Moraes. Welcome, Dulce Story. How are you? Welcome, Daisy. How are you, Daisy? Welcome, welcome, John the Rosa. Welcome, John. We see Paula here. Welcome, Paula. Stay there. Don't go away. Okay? It's worthwhile, right? The beautiful stories that Jesus is, are, is telling us to strengthen our souls. And I can see more friends who've joined us. Teresa Castro, how are you? Adilson, big brother, how are you, friend? By the way, the videos are being transposed from Facebook to YouTube. So just wait a little, a day or two, and you see that it's already there for those who do not have Facebook. I know many people have been asking about it. So we are working on it in our team. Okay. And what else? What else can you tell us, computer? Coming. It's coming. It's coming. Don't worry. We will be able to do it. Right, So, How are you? I hope everything is well there. With Luana as well. Big hug to the both of you. Right? And today, we're studying chapter 21. Hello, Angelita, Rudy. How are you, Rudy? How are you? The people that I can see. Oh, computers. Matthew, I hope you are well, Matthew. Welcome. Ademir, welcome as well, okay? So today it's the story of the industrious rich men. Mm, we need to know about this. Do you feel guilty? about possessing things, money, being wealthy. Majority of people do. And you know why you feel guilty? Because for the longest time we have mismanaged it. Exactly. But that's one of the steps we need to work upon and heal. No. We can learn how to temporarily have things and channel them as co-creators. Can you imagine the day you'll be a co-creator at a major level, like Jesus and the other Christ spirits that put together planet Earth? They had more than gold and diamonds. They have everything at their hands. And what are they doing? Creating a new home for the evolution of other children of God. The day we learn that, 
that movement, we'll no longer feel guilty and we'll raise ourselves, ascend to another level. That's the plan. So today, this chapter that we're going to read is healing for us because we're going to make peace in our hearts and tell ourselves, I know how to possess temporarily and channel it to the general good. Okay? All right? So that's the plan for us today. It's the plan. The plan to make us feel this good, right? Not a Brazil, Carol Correa. Now I can see here. So where did it begin? James. James, the oldest disciple. Did you know that James was the oldest? Many people think Peter was the oldest, but it, it was actually James. And it's interesting because when we talk about, it's not by chance that it comes from the oldest person, the remarks we're going to read. You're going to see why. James, the oldest disciple, gave an invaluable talk about the longing for wealth. So common plan, place amongst mortals. When the family discussion ended, Jesus commented, smiling. Stop for a second, please. Let us observe the scenario. As if we're freezing the movie and observing. Why the oldest is talking about the longing for wealth? Everybody, when we get older, we want to, right? People talk about retirement, working less, having resources to take that last breath of life. Isn't that what many people think? So you see, James is like many of us. Some of us want to dream about living long, working hard, and like Kardec, dying at work. What a joy, right? Good work in the good. Jesus listened, and when the family discussion ended, that's interesting. He didn't intervene. He didn't say. He commented, smiling. Interesting. Smiling. Again, you trust the master, right? He's not smiling. At Sarcasm. Irony. What kind of smile is this? It's a smile of the good news. He's going to share good news. Are you ready for the good news? He's going to share it now. So this is Jesus smiling good news. There was a God, fearing man, who was dedicated to uprightness. He read a lot of advice on prudence, and he tried to work hard in order to store up a treasure that would benefit his family. After heartfelt prayer, he went to work at a number of different business, businesses, anxious to achieve his goal. For 20 years, he put away coin after coin until he had managed to build a patrimony of a few million. When he stopped working in order to take a look back at his work, he was greatly disappointed to realize that every area of his life had changed without, even, without him even noticing it. His home, which was once humble and happy, had taken on a somber mood. His wife had become a slave to a thousand and one obligations intended to kill time. His children whispered amongst th themselves, speculating as to what would be their share of their dead father's inheritance. His loyal friends had deserted him. Believing him to be completely happy, his neighbors fenced him, with, fenced him in with envy and irony. 
the local authorities forced him into a dupli duplicitous attitude of artifice that was completely in disagreement with the sincerity of his heart. Businessmen constantly visited to propose criminal or improper business dealings. His servants flattered him with obvious pretense when he was within earshot, only to curse his name behind closed doors. Due to so many disruptions, he was compelled to make his home into a fortress to protect him against everyone and everything. Now he had time to take note of various bodily illnesses, and he rarely made it through a day without stomach problems and headaches. After a few weeks of close self-observance, he concluded that the fortune he kept in his coffer under lock and key was the reason for his endless disillusionments and regrets. One particular night, he could no longer bear the worries stemming from his newfound status, and he prayed in tears begging for the Lord's inspiration. After the moving prayer, an angel appeared to him on the evanescent screen of a dream and said to him compassionately, Every fortune that flows like the crystal clear waters of a spring is a living blessing, but all wealth that lies in useless repose is a poisonous well of stagnant water. Why did you demand a river when a simple cup of water was enough to quench your thirst? What inspired you to stock granaries to overflowing when a few grains of wheat were all you needed for a meal? What made you hoard hundreds of pelts around the home when a few bits of wood would were enough to warm your grave-bound body. Go back and convert your coin chest into a miraculous coffer of salvation. Extend the joys of work. Build schools to sow spiritual light and distribute happiness to the multitudes. On earth, money is only worth the good it can do. Unspeakably shocked, the chaser of gold awoke transformed, and from that day onward he began to unleash his enormous savings so that all of his neighbors could join him in the blessings of service and goodwill. At the first hint of his spiritual renewal, his wife stared at him strangely and repulsed. His children hated him, and his beneficiaries thought he was crazy. However, revitalized and happy, the industrious millionaire began enjoying an open sanctuary in his home once again, and the spirit of hidden happiness returned to live in his heart. The master became silent, and James, who was in charge of that evening's talk, exclaimed enthusiastically, Lord, what a priceless and sublime lesson. Jesus smiled and responded, Yes, but only for those who have ears to hear and eyes to see. Do we? That's an assessment question. Can we hear it well? Yes. Let's go to the introduction before we go back to parts of this story. It's the good news after all. Let's go back. Remember when we said that Emmanuel explained to us that Christ-like spirits together with Jesus got together and planned the formation of our planet and put it all together. Question for you. Do you think Jesus used matter to create a planet, but he created a better one for him? to leave somewhere else? Think about this. Maybe an outrageous question or nonsensical, but think about this. Where does he leave? 
do you know? When we go to the spirit book, and I forgot the question, and forgive me for this, I'll, I'll search into this, but there is a footnote that Kardec writes to us according to the revelation of the spirits. They say that pure spirits, they don't actually live in a specific place. They gather together because they are never stopped. They don't need to eat and drink, etc. So the sun, for example, is a meeting point for pure spirits. The rays of light are the byproduct of their beautiful thoughts and feelings. What do you think about this? So Jesus didn't retain any possession of the universe for himself. Neither did the other ones. Oh, but when is, they don't need it. Well, that's not the point, right? The point is, we are learning that all that we need is love. Oh my gosh, is that a song? <laughs> all you need is love. All we need is love, of course. But we need to learn to share. To really share. And the illusion of attachment is so, so anchoring. When we go to the book Heaven and Hell by Allan Kardec, in the second part of it, in the first chapters, we get an introduction, especially in the first chapter of second part of the book Heaven and Hell. We get to know that the more attached we are to people, to things, to the passing things of this life, we create strong bonds between our peri-spirit and the physical body. So when this carnation happens, we're going to suffer. Suffer because the detachment is going to be harder. So what do we need to do? To dematerialize ourselves throughout our lives. To make sure that we fly light. So the minimalist movement on earth is wisdom. That's good, hard for some people, but that's a good movement in life. To downsize everything. Less needs, happier life. Focusing on the good of others. Mm -hmm. We have so much. And... We have so many things unnecessary, but we're not talking about being poor, but channeling correctly. We need people who are business people, who are working with uh, the wealth of the world. But that's a super difficult challenge. Many people dream of being wealthy. What for? What for? What's the point of being wealthy if not to, as he says here, I will quote from the very words he says, On earth, money is only worth the good it can do. On earth, money is only worth the good it can do. Hmm? Teresa Castro is saying, also, if I understand correctly, James was a rabbi and the one who adhered closely to the Jewish tradition. Exactly. Thank you so much, Teresa, for bringing that about. Exactly. Precisely. When you read the book, Paul and Stephen, he's the very one that you're talking about. Hello, Deborah Beldovics. How are you? Sally Rocha. Sunshine. How are you? Joyce, big hug to you, Joyce, Marco, and Jovelina, Publulentas, how are you, friends? So, let's go back. So, Jesus is telling us, is wealth a problem? No. A problem is not knowing what to do with it. Dreaming about being wealthy is a problem. Because... We don't need to dream about it in the sense that's not a dream for us because wealth is a concession of God. And if God finds that we need to experience that for the greater good, it's going to happen. 
it's not a personal dream it's not something that we need to worry about okay we don't dream of wealth we preserve health we don't dream of beauty we find ourselves beautiful as we are mm -hmm. right so for us Carol Correa is kindly sharing with us that the footnote thank you Carol thank you for your help the footnote that I mentioned about the Sun the pure spirits is regarding question 188 of the spirits book thank you so much thank you thank you thank you so for all of us tonight it's a call to revisit money repeating repeating um, my on earth money is only worth the good it can do so if you want to heal more deeply about money suggestion there is a book we translated named money and you can buy it at amazon or at the website of the u.s spiritist federation it's right there money by emmanuel sushiko xavier and we have also on facebook and youtube and soundcloud the whole series of the study of the book money by emmanuel sushiko xavier why don't you go there listen to it or read it heal the heart don't shoo away money money is from god says emmanuel it comes from god it has a purpose we need to learn how to handle it with wisdom knowing that it's energy that comes and we're being asked to channel it so again on earth money is only worth the good it can do jesus very very beautifully teaches us he waited for everybody to speak james was leading the discussion how beautiful is it he's teaching us a lesson he let everybody speak smiles makes his comment as a story stop allows allows james to make a comment and he smiles again how many times did he smile here several times how often do you smile in your meetings at home in your day-to-day -day life that's richness that's true wealth spreading joy he's sharing the good news and he's telling us that this story is only worth while if we can really feel it if we can really understand it we know it here but when it comes to life we're still calculating the steps we're still believing in temporary power do you believe in temporary power if you do if i do i'll be missing the boat because usually the most devout spirits will come in disguised forms usually in poverty like Chico Xavier, like the Dalai Lama, like the Valdo Franco, Mother Teresa, and many others. Martin Luther King Jr. They come amongst people that are not noticing them, and then they become beacon of spiritual wealth, emotional wealth, social wealth, and also material wealth everything that was donated to Chico Xavier he channeled to others when he was approaching the final third of his life he had nothing in the living will why because he had already shared it so when he died physically speaking nobody was disputing his resources because he had already shared he understood that money is only worth the good that it does so what is our homework our homework is to revisit our relationship with money let's make peace with it money is from god we just need to treat it kindly and channel for the general good shall we friends so let us pray Right, Amanda Andrade, Tio Marcial, 
Um beijo, saudades. Solange, Aline. So, friends, right now, as we are here, we're going to pray. And we're going to pray feeling that Jesus is passing by. Jesus is passing by. Jesus is passing by. And when he comes, everything is fine. Sadness is gone and happiness arrives. And when he comes, everything is fine. Sadness is gone and happiness arrives. Thank you, Jesus, for freeing us from these myths about money. We're freer today than we were 30 minutes ago. I hope you enjoy your next 24 hours with Jesus passing by and teaching us how to deal with money in a completely different way. You're being called to be industrious with your resources. Let us do it and be happier. When we come tomorrow here at Kardec Radio, we're going to talk about the divine talisman. Thank you, friends. Until tomorrow, God willing.